Swift Segment Specialists. This is part five of our showrunner app accessing the TV Maze API to get television show information. As mentioned, this is a solution to an actual midterm exam that my students took after completing 11 weeks in their zero to full stack Swift and iOS course, and you can go through this series either as a challenge or use it as a tutorial. And in this video, we're gonna code up the segmented control that we added in an earlier video so that we can sort our table view data either in alphabetical order or highest to lowest based on rating. Let's sort this out. And we're gonna update the list view controller so that when the A to Z segment is pressed, the table view is sorted in alphabetical order, but when the rating segment is pressed, the table sorts in the order from the highest rating to the lowest. Now we're gonna put the code used in the segment press control into another function named sort table. Then we're gonna call sort table from segment pressed and also after returning values from get data. Now this is gonna ensure that the data is sorted according to the pressed segment after it's been returned via get data. So if this is working properly, you should see the following results after searching for Star Trek and then pressing the selected segments in the segmented control. Let's head over to Xcode and get this done. Now, if we head over to listviewcontroller.swift, we remember that we had already created an IB action for our segment control and we call this segment pressed. Now we wanna to respond to whichever segment is pressed. Why don't we use a switch case statement here? We could use if else as well, but this is a chance for us to work with switch case. So I'll start to type in switch. We can see code completion offers up the switch statement. When I press return, Xcode fleshes out this statement for me, giving me the switch, one case and a default. Now we're gonna switch on the segment selected. Now the segmented control has a property a selected segment index, which returns the currently selected index. That's an integer and these are zero index. So the first segment is segment zero. And now because we're inside of an IB action, we could refer to our segment control that's calling this function as the sender. But instead, we're gonna use the IB outlet that we created in an earlier video. We created that outlet for this control and we called it simply segmented control. And we're doing this because we'll eventually cut the code out of this IB action and we'll put it in a helper function that we'll call when a segment is pressed or when data is returned from get data. So if it's returned from get data, we're not going to have a sender. Now we'll show you how to do this in just a bit, but for now, let's code this up right inside this IB action. So again, what we're switching on is segmented control dot selected segment index. Now the first case, if that first segment is pressed, is gonna be case zero. I'm also gonna highlight these two lines here, copy them and I'm gonna paste them down below. And here I'll change case zero to case one so that we can code up our second segment in this block. Now the default needs to be in here. If we were using an enum, then we would have an exhaustive type, but Swift doesn't know how many segments are in the segmented control and it can't tell this. So we'll just put in a print statement that says print error. This should never happen. There are only two segments in this segmented control. Now in case zero, what we're going to do is we're going to sort our show array, but we're going to sort it on the show.name property of show array. So we'll say shows.showArray. This is the array that we want to sort. So we're going to sort it using the dot sort method. We'll select this sort by method right here, press return. And what we're going to do in the area that's highlighted is we're going to put in curly braces. Now the curly braces are going to dictate how we're going to perform our sort. So what we put in between the curly braces here is a pattern that we use that reflects the comparison and the results that we want to achieve. So let's review how this works. Now to get this to work, we're going to compare just two elements, but the sort function will handle looking at all of the elements and make sure that whatever pattern we show with two elements will hold for all of the elements that we're sorting on and we're gonna to refer to the first of the two elements that we're comparing as dollar sign zero. Now we wanna access specifically in shows.showArray the elements dot show dot name property. And then we're gonna make sure that this element comes first or before any other elements in standard alphabetical order. And the way that we do that is we say less than or with a less than symbol. If we wanted to go Z to A, we would say greater than. Now this works with strings, show.name is in fact a string. And then we're gonna compare this two to see if it is indeed less than and to sort it so that the first element is less than the larger element is we compare this to dollar sign one, which is the next element in show array. And we're gonna access that's dot show dot name property as well. Now, sometimes it takes code completion a while to catch up with what we've typed, especially if we're using this dollar sign zero dollar sign one syntax, but we can see that Xcode has caught up. It's pretty printed the colors of these values. This is exactly what we want. Again, the syntax is gnarly, but if you remember or reuse this little code example that we have here, this is the correct statement that we want to sort our array in alphabetical order. This also works by the way for ascending numerical values sorted smallest to largest. Then I'm just gonna copy this sort statement that I've created up here paste it in for case one, but I'm gonna change the properties that I'm comparing. So instead of saying dot show dot name, I wanna compare the average rating. So I get to that by saying dot show dot rating. Remember this is an optional, so it's dollar sign dot average. Now because this is optional, 
I've got to deal with the fact that my average might be a nil. So what I'll put in is question mark, question mark for nil coalescing. And if I do get a nil, I'll put in a value on the right hand side of the question mark, question mark, and that will be 0, 0.0. So if it's nil, I'll give a 0, 0.0. Otherwise I can use whatever's on the left hand side. And I can grab this whole piece after the dollar sign zero, copy it, paste it after the dollar sign one, and this is gonna perform the comparison for me. Now the other thing that I need to do is I don't wanna sort this in ascending order, I wanna sort it in descending order from largest to smallest, so I'm gonna change the less than symbol to the greater than symbol. Now there's another thing that's really easy to forget. Now remember, when you reorder your table view cells, you need to perform a table view reload data. If we didn't do that, we would have sorted our data, but we wouldn't have updated the table view to show the new sort order. So it would look like nothing happened. We wouldn't get any error in Xcode. It would be tough to figure this out. And trust me, I know this because after lots of time spent trying to find the bug that resulted from forgetting that I needed to reload my table view data, I will advise you to commit to memory that every time you reorder your data source, like performing a sort, you need to reload your table view data. So now as promised, let's break out the code that we just wrote in this IB action into a helper function. We'll call that sort table. And we're doing this because we also want to call this function to sort the data based on the segment that's selected when we perform get data. So when we perform a get data, we're not selecting a segment, but there was already a segment that was selected. So if we didn't do this, when we performed a get data, the data would be returned and it would be unsorted, even though one of our two segments is already selected. So now that we define the helper function sort table above this, and it's got no parameters, I'm gonna highlight everything inside of our segment pressed IB action. I'm gonna cut that out with the command X. I'm gonna paste it into sort table, and then I'm gonna call sort table from inside of segment pressed. And now you can see why we needed an IB outlet for our segment control. So we're no longer referring to the sender in our helper function sort table up here. We needed to make sure we named our segment and we called it segmented control. Now the last thing we need to do is to go up here to our get data call and we're going to get rid of the table view reload data and we're simply going to call self dot sort table. Now remember sort table is going to reload our data after we've returned the data and then sorted based on whichever segment was pressed. This is looking good. Let's build and run. Hammer time. Let's type in your mother. I'm not making a your mama joke here. I'm going to search for TV shows that have your mother in it. We'll click on search. We see a really terrible one as the first element here, but we see that these are sorted based on A to Z. So see how A to Z is selected? If we didn't call sort data and get data, then we wouldn't have our table sorted A to Z according to the selection under segmented control. Now we can click on a show like How I Met Your Mother. We can go back, we can sort on rating, but we see How I Met Your Mother is the top rated show with your mother in the name. I actually have never seen that show before, but I hear a lot of people like it. This is a pretty cool API because we have international programs in here like this one, which is in Spanish. There's also a Japanese one in here. And if we go back and we want to perform another search, you can enter another phrase like Star Trek. We get all these Star Treks sorted alphabetically by the first Star Trek all the way down to Star Trek Voyager. Click on rating. We see Voyager moves up toward the top because it's a highly rated show. Click on Voyager. All right, Captain Janeway. Nice way to finish off this video. Everything is looking good. And in our next video, our final video, we're going to finish our exam and finish off our showrunner app by adding a little bit of animation and sound. Keep at it!